What's up, folks, and welcome to Indie Ramble. So here's something a little bit different for you. Um, I have not covered the other games in this series, but this one came across my radar recently, and I decided to jump in. And you know what? It surprised me, so I wanted to show this to you. So this is Gravatar Recharged. Now, if you're not an old fogey like me, you might not know what Gravatar is. It is a classic Atari title from, well, it was on a, a few different platforms, but principally the arcade. And it's a very well-regarded historical title of theirs, and it's, but it's also one of the titles that's kind of sat dormant for a long time. Well, Atari's name has been through the ringer many, many times in the last few decades. It, there, there could be a whole documentary on the history of this company. But the latest incarnation of it, when they're not doing things like their own console, cryptocurrency, themed hotels, and hats with Bluetooth speakers in them, yes, that's a real thing, they are occasionally getting some new video games made. And they've been putting out an entire series called Recharged, most of which have been put together by this small developer called Adam Vision Studios, who's actually made some interesting little projects of his own prior to these. And they are modern day reimaginings of old Atari classics. And they're actually pretty well done. And whether you have reverence for some of those titles or not, there are some interesting things to, to experience with these, I think. And Gravatar is probably one of the best titles they could have done this with. So the idea behind Gravatar, there's no story. Um, there, this is in an age where story and games wasn't really much of a thing. Your aim with this is that you're this, this little ship flying around with sort of tank controls, not unlike Asteroids, another Atari classic. And your aim is to destroy all these different planets on these different, throughout these different star systems which will in turn get you sort of sucked through the sun, if you will, and pulled into another system. And they're principally score attack games. This wasn't the arcades originally after all. And what you'll do here is you'll spawn in this galaxy where there are a number of different planets floating around and you can actually choose to attack them in any order that you want. And you'll have different sets of objectives. Some of them are clear out all the enemies. Some of them, like the one I just completed there, was activate some radio towers. Some of them are collect an object, things like that. They, they vary a little bit. And you don't have to take out enemies in any of the maps where that's not your objective. So here is my objective, obviously. But you don't have to do that in other, other maps. But if you want to maximize your score, then that's definitely what you want to do. And along the way, you can pick up some special weapon power-ups. You can, you will pick up fuel can, uh, canisters, which is something you have to be mindful of. Your ship does have fuel, and if you run out of it, you'll lose a life. I, and there are other extra collectibles you can pick up, like uh, stranded astronauts and things like that which add to your score and also can be put towards the game's various achievements. Now you may be seeing here from me playing this that this is not the easiest game in the world and that that is principally down to the controls. This game does have asteroid style tank controls so you are I'm playing with a controller here but you're so you turn your ship with the analog stick and then you press a button to accelerate forward and letting off the gas doesn't stop you. You have inertia and you have to sort of balance that very carefully. And in later levels, this will get very challenging because you're gonna have to navigate through some really, really tight spaces. Oh, darn, I got myself a little too close there. But because I took that thing out, it actually finished that planet as well. And you'll see that if you go back and look at the the original game, which I'll put some footage of on the screen right now, I mean, yeah, these, needless to say, look quite different from each other, but there are a lot of similarities at their core design level. And I think that's what these Atom Vision remakes are really doing well, is they have modern aesthetics to them, and it's it's a simple art style, but it's catching. I, I think it looks I think it looks very nice. 
you know, the sort of simple color palette, the sort of simple edged graphics, you know, they're, they're not complicated and they're not fancy. But these are remakes of old school arcade games. You know, they don't really need to be uber fancy to be good. And, and I like the look of it. A number of these games also have a soundtrack done by the absolutely fantastic Megan McDuffie, who is been really making her name for herself with game soundtracks lately, but also just produces her own electronic music that is fantastic. I'm actually a big fan of hers. And the music in this is cool. It's chill. You know, it's not high energy. It's not stress inducing. It's, it's just sort of a nice chill vibe that you get while you're playing it. So I kind of sucked at that one, but you can see here at the end, you will get score a nice score breakdown based on a whole bunch of different factors. And it does keep your score here. And there are online leaderboards, which is always nice. You can, uh, you know, you can go against, uh, you can look up stuff against your friends or against the entire world if you want. Really, really nice, uh, you know, simple, but, you know, very effective, I think. And if you're an old school fan of Gravatar, you're going to see a lot of similarities in this. Visually, absolutely not. But in terms of gameplay, yes, these are very, th this, this shares the DNA. And Atom Vision does a really good job at respecting and modernizing what made the titles that he's doing these recharged entries in what made them really good and compelling back in the day and indeed what still makes them pretty good to play now you know gravatar visually hasn't maybe hasn't aged super well but it's it still plays great and there aren't a lot of games that do what it does as well as it does and that's impressive when you consider how old it is, you know, and that they were really kind of figuring video games out when they were when they were making that back then. And it, it's a really nice balance that he strikes about giving it modern quality of life improvements, modern features, modern aesthetics, but it's still Gravatar. It's not... There's been a lot of companies who have access to, to some really old IP. In, indeed, Atari themselves in previous incarnations has done this exact thing, who will take an old IP that people have reverence for and just slap that name on any old product that ha often has nothing really to do with it. And in many cases is basically shovelware grade just to capital, just to make a quick and easy buck off of people's nostalgia. And that doesn't happen nearly as much anymore because, well, we're now in a generation where a lot of young people today don't necessarily know what these games are. And people like me who are, who are you know, people who like old school classic games and still appreciate them to this day, we can smell a phony a mile away and we can tell when someone's trying to, to screw us that way. And what I like about these is that they, they clearly get, you know, modern Atari is what it is, but they they gave these games to someone who clearly has reverence and respect for them and who gave them the care and attention they needed. And rather than just farming them out to some crappy shovelware team who will just, you know, make whatever so they can get a paycheck, instead they gave it to a small indie developer who is really passionate about this kind of thing and has demonstrated through some of his prior projects that he's able to make cool stuff like this. And I think that's a really interesting way to go about this type of thing because so many of these, these older nostalgia-based games were handled by developers who didn't care. They just wanted to get paid and be done with it. And that's why a lot of them really kind of sucked. But... And they weren't indie devs either. You know, they, they, back in the day, there were a lot of developers out there who were known for being able to crank out, you know, branded shovelware on a tight budget. And I really like the different approach that they took with these recharged games by, by partnering with a passionate indie dev instead. And that way they were still able to keep their budget low, but make games that are really cool out of it. And that I think have a lot of appeal both to newer players and to nostalgia enthusiasts, if you will, like myself. I think that's really cool. I really hadn't given the Recharge series much of a chance before this, 
and I, you know, I, I looked at them and I went, yeah, these look kind of cool, but kind of whatever I'm, you know, and I, I just kind of ignored them and I never really tried to cover them. Now that I've gotten this, I honestly want to try out some of the other ones. You know, they've got, they've got Centipede, they've got Breakout, they've got, they've got, I think five or six of them at this point. And they all seem to have this same kind of, of treatment put on them. And I think it's just a really cool way to approach this. And I think if you are a fan of Gravatar, or even if you haven't played it before, you know, as you can tell, this is not a simple game. It is something that will challenge you, but it, it shows you not just the roots of gaming, you know, where a lot of things have come from, but it shows you that even way back in the day, <laughs> there were still really good, compelling, mechanics to be had you know it, it i think it demonstrates well why people like me can go back and play gravatar a game from decades and decades ago and still find it cool to this day and it's because a lot of those games were made with very significant constraints they had no you know they had it, most of these games were made with less processing power and less memory than like a digital watch from 20 years ago had You know, they really they were working on very tight constraints So if you want to make something that's cool and that people are gonna like you have to learn to make a lot out of a little and Don't get me wrong. There was a lot of crap from these early eras, too. Uh Oh, I ran out of fuel. Well bugger <laughs> You know, there was a lot of crap from from these this early era too but games like gravatar really showed the amazing things you could do with limited resources and those things still hold up today and still offer something compelling and entertaining at least in my opinion and that's more why i wanted to show this to you guys you're really getting the meat and potatoes by just watching me play it here i don't really have to explain a lot about this this game is pretty simple i have gotten past the first galaxy and it only gets harder believe me uh you this is not something you're gonna finish in a sitting it's it's it takes it takes work it, it takes it, it, you know you're gonna you're gonna work for this so there we go there's a little power up overload is cool because you can just run into things and and wreck them and the nice thing about this collection too is that it's basically everywhere it's on all the consoles, it's on the PC, which is where I'm playing it. It is on the Switch. I think these are perfect for the Switch because these are games that can be played in short sessions. Um, and I think it's a, a perfect thing for that. It's even on Atari's console, the VCS, which really at the end of the day is just a PC. But, you know, it's even there if you want. I mean, obviously they gotta put their own games on their own thing. And I've just been pleasantly surprised by it. I have been playing it a fair bit. I'm still enjoying myself with it. And this is, as I've said before, you know, th th you can tell I really like a game on Indie Ramble when I say that I'm gonna keep playing it after I finish the video. And I'm definitely gonna do that. This is a great game to play, you know, when I'm taking a little break from work or when I'm on my lunch or something like that. It's something that you can play casually. Uh, I don't, I imagine that this could run on very low-end hardware. This is something that would be great for low-spec gamers. Um, I have a gaming laptop that you can switch back to integrated uh, integrated graphics, which are are more powerful than the one you'd find ones you'd find on a lot of corporate laptops. But they're still pretty lightweight, and this runs like a top on it. So I imagine if you are running, you know, some uh, you know a ThinkPad with Intel graphics, you could probably do this okay. Um, and it's 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 just a nice little package and I think it's reasonably priced for what it offers uh, I think they didn't go they didn't go nuts with that and they just didn't try to overdo it they really just tried to take gravatar and what made it good and modernize it a little bit and they did that and they did a great job with it I think so in addition to that I've been only showing you sort of the main mode they do have this challenge mode as well which is really cool um, basically they're single levels that you have to go through that are particularly challenging and you get points not only the the standard points for finishing the level 
but you'll get additional points for doing things like taking out all the enemies, collecting all the power-ups, uh, all these other things like that, and they are leaderboarded independently. So, if you don't want to do the campaign, or if you've even finished the campaign, and you just want something to give you that extra level of challenge, but the extra bragging rights that come with it, they added these as well, which is, again, a nice little add-on. Original Gravatar didn't have this, and you only get one life with them, as you can see. And, yeah, original Gravatar didn't have these, so it's another neat little thing that they've added. And, yeah, it's just really, really cool. Um, I'd really like to see Atari offer up. I don't know how many more of these they have planned, but obviously they're selling well enough since they keep putting them out. I would like to see them at some point maybe offer, like, a discounted bundle with a whole lot of them. Right now you have to buy them independently. Um, at least as far as I've seen, if you could have an ability to just pick up the whole five or six, you know, for 20 bucks or something like that, I think that would be really cool. Just put out an Atari recharge pack, you know, but, uh, they are working right now. As I record this, there, uh, there is a, an Atari 50th anniversary pack coming out soon. That looks like it's going to be absolutely nuts in terms of what it contains in it. So who knows? Maybe these will be in there. I think that would actually be really cool. Um, you know, like I said, new Atari is what it is. They're a weird company <laughs> right now, to put it mildly. And I definitely don't like everything they're doing. But these things, I think they got the right idea of it. And I think this is a great way to pay respect to the their, their, to their history and their legacy in a way that can make retro gamers happy while attracting new gamers as well. And really, I think if you're going to make a new version of an old title, that's really the best you can hope for. So, yeah, that's Gravatar Recharged. Uh, it is the latest, as I said, in a series of recharged games from Atari. So you can check them out. They are all on basically everything. And this impressed me, and it's impressed me enough that I actually do want to go back and start checking out some of the other ones. So I think that's a pretty good endorsement from me. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you liked what you saw here, please do all the normal YouTube things. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this. What other Atari titles would you like to see remastered in this fashion? There's a lot. And uh, I think we could have an interesting discussion about the, the other ones that we'd like to see get the recharge treatment. And, uh, you know, what would you like to see Atari put out a, you know, a bundle pack as well? I think that would be really cool. And uh, as always, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash pxabstraction for multiple variety streams a week. We cover a lot of Indian retro over there, including stuff you won't see here on YouTube. We have a great community, and I'd love to see you be a part of it. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next Indie Ramble. You folks have yourselves a good one. Take it easy.